on today's try to finish something, I want to give you a little bit of backstory. Something that I need for me and thought you might like to participate. When I go out and I go to conventions as the Mandalorian, I do the pre-Beskar Mandalorian, which is my favorite. And I constantly get the, hey, where's Baby Yoda? So I started carrying the Baby Yoda doll in a satchel, a man purse, for my, <laughs> my Mandalorian. And if you've seen the satchel from like Entertainment Weekly, technically, it's the wrong time period because that's the satchel, the man purse that the Mandalorian uses when he has his shiny armor. And I'm in the better armor, the pre-Beskar armor. So I needed to be able to carry the Baby Yoda and I was carrying it in one of those man purses and then I'd have kids come up and try and talk to Baby Yoda and I'd have to say, Baby Yoda's sleeping. Baby Yoda's a doll. Baby Yoda's not going to talk back. And then the godfather of Star Wars room builds, Brian from the Smuggler's Room, did the carbonized Chucky. Chucky in carb the carbon frozen Chucky. There was a wall mounted display. I started thinking and then... Kelly Stern of Props and Villainy did a Baby Yoda in Carbonite, and I knew this is what I had to do. I needed a portable, carbonized Baby Yoda. Then I could bring it to conventions, and when kids asked, hey, where's Baby Yoda? Can I talk to him? I'd go, nope. Baby Yoda's frozen. Huh? You like where this is going? Well, when I started talking to Kelly Stern about this, I was trying to figure out the best way of doing this. And then I had an idea. A box fan would be the perfect starting point. It has a handle that I can carry it. It already has an on-off switch to control my electronics. And then Kelly Stern suggested, well, how are you going to do the different electrical boxes and lights on the sides? That's when he had the idea. These. What about using gang boxes? Mount them to the side. You can put your lights in them. They come in a bunch of different varieties. You've got doubles, you've got singles, you've got round ones. So, that's how the challenge was born. If you would like to participate in our build along, it's not really a build challenge, it's the we're fans of carbon freezing build along. See, we're, we're fans of, <laughs> never mind. If you'd like to participate, use four of these gang boxes, use a box fan, and submit your pictures and your final pictures of the product. So the, the, the progression pictures and the final one, you know what I'm saying. Send it by the end of this year and a story about why you were building yours, and I will feature yours in my first of the year build video. Want to participate? Sounds like it'll be a little bit of fun. If you want to participate, there are no prizes. It's just a build along for fun. I would love to have your stuff in there and I'll feature your socials and all of your stuff in the video when it comes out next year, which is actually really soon. But that's not what I'm doing in today's Try to Finish Something. I have a paint shaker because I've got a lot of things that are gonna need paint and it's starting to get cold in California and I need to make sure that my paint is thoroughly mixed. Adel Morin of Fabworks did a great job of putting together a paint mixer. I'm going to do that. I'm also going to do my Clever 3D Studios Boba Fett helmet. I got to get some paint on that thing. And I need another light for my Star Wars droid head lights. And this one's going to be inspired by the Mandalorian. And I got a lot of things to do. And that's what I'm going to do on today's Try to Finish Something. So I have quite a few projects going on and a lot of spray paint in my future. So I figured it was about time to make the Fabworks paint mixer. I know this is nothing for other parts of the world, but the temperature here in California is in the 30s. It's foggy and it's finally rainy. Cold weather and spray paint means warming the cans and making sure that the paint is well mixed. I will link Ado Morin's spray paint mixing video in my video description. I'm using his step-by-step -step instructions and using the PVC pipe plug. Whole build is about $7. The red plug needs a bit of sanding to remove the letters, and I think the red is telling me this prop's story. I think my plan will be to use some of my leftover Shore Trooper paints and use the red Montana gold paint. 
Huh? See what I'm doing? I, I figured I should record this since this should be the last time I am handshaking one of these cans. Because handshaking is for chumps. Well, <laughs> and those that haven't built one of these yet. My plan is to give this a red end like the biceps on the shore troopers. I will leave the middle black and paint the other end with the official Shore Sierra beige and add a few of the stickers that Ado Morin designed and Derek of Van Oaks Props has on his Etsy site. I'll link that in the video description as well. Shore Trooper feel isn't selling to me yet. Ah, it needs the three yellow rectangles that are on the bicep. And since I can't move on and I obsess over tiny details, I am now masking off the rectangles and I'm going to shoot it with white first so that the yellow will pop. Paint it yellow. unmask it and now I am weathering the small yellow squares on the paint mixer that no one will ever see. Yes, I am obsessing and I realize most of you are mocking my lunacy as you're watching this and I, I, I get it. I'm not sure why I get so deep into Star Warsing a paint mixer. Okay, paint mixer done. Time to move on. This is my Boba helmet printed by Clever 3D Studios and I've really done very little prep work on it, just what you saw in my last video. It was so smooth and such a nice print, it has been a breeze to sand. I am just using Bondo putty on the edges. When you do a 3D print, there are layers, and on the edges they have these, I don't know, layer lines like stacks of paper, and I'm just putting Bondo putty on those edges, and I will sand those. And this is not an indictment of this print. It's more an indictment of my personality and my obsessive compulsion. You can probably see that this helmet is glassy and super smooth. What am I doing? I am making a slurry of Bondo putty and thinning it with mineral spirits. I'm trying to get it a milk-like texture and I'm putting a thin layer over this whole thing with a chip brush. Now that it's dry, I'm sanding the whole thing again and it is really, really smooth. This is why I know I have issues. It's like glass. This version of Boba I am doing is from The Mandalorian, and he has that orange peel-like acid texture on it. So, yep, I will be adding texture to this super smooth surface. <laughs> yeah, I know. I am making it overly smooth, and then I'm going to ruin it by adding bumps and texture. I'm going to give it a coat of gray filler primer and mist it with black using my new can mixer and head outside. While that dries, I'm going to make another part of my Star Wars room build lighting. This is an eBay purchase from some overseas Halloween company. I've used them before in my Mando spike build, link up above. They are around 70 bucks and are great for this type of project. Not great for cosplay, but they work perfectly for these builds. 
My plan is to paint this like the remnant troopers in The Mandalorian, and I'm looking for excuses to practice with my airbrush, so I will tint this a little bit with inks. These are airbrush inks, just using these to fade on some color. Then I'm using brown and black water-based oils, and I will add some drips and use paper towels to do the paint, dab, and wipe off. Paint, dab, and wipe off. Changing the color slightly with each pass of this. And you know me, I'm doing a whole lot of passes. I will show you a little bit of detail on this cheek side of my helmet just to show what I'm doing. Then I will add some small black chips randomly like they have on the Remnant Troopers. And I'm just doing this with black water-based oil paint too. I will do this side, and I won't bore you by showing me do the entire helmet, it's just a lot of the same thing, and I think you get the idea. But with the magic of editing, voila, it's weathered. And I went back over all of the weathering, drying it with a hair dryer in between, and now it's time to attack it with the Dremel and the old spinning blade and add some damage. Add a bit of color to those cuts and grooves and I will add a bit of powder paint pigments for dust. I'll pull another one of my spider cords through it. I'm going to let that paint dry just a little bit and do some sanding on my boba helmet that now has a dried layer of gray primer filler dusted with black. The two colors help show the high and low points on the print while you sand. And I know I've said this before, but this is such a sexy print. It's so smooth and perfect. I recommend a lot of petting of your project. It seems overly sensual, but sliding your hand across the surface really shows you any rough spots or high spots. And this helmet is so ready for some color, but I do kind of like the look of this now. It's kind of a cool look, but green is in its future. Now that the Remnant Trooper is dry, time to add some of those cloth scraps as seen in The Mandalorian when they're on those spikes. The cloth to me looks like that garden gauze sheet, so I bought some on Amazon and I will tear and distress a sheet of that and then take it outside and hit it with some stripes of brown and black paint. I don't need or want to cover this whole thing. The white will get weathered. And here's how. I will add some brown and black acrylic into a small bucket with some water and I will submerge the gauze and let the white parts absorb the paint mixture and I will wring it out and dry it. I am using an LED bulb that doesn't get hot to the touch and I am tying the gauze around the cord on the inside of the helmet and I added a few wires sticking out of some of the cuts that I put in the helmet. All right, after just one coat of paint, here is my Clever 3D Studios Mandalorian era Boba Fett helmet and it looks beautiful. And my Mandalorian Remnant Trooper helmet light, I'm calling finished. And my Boba helmet one step closer to being finished. I really hope you liked the video and if you did, please like and subscribe and share the video and tell a friend about it. If you didn't, as always, just keep it to yourself and we'll see you next time as we try to finish something.